We are building the top trumps project from the Ybyte Python curriculum available at www.ybyte.in. Uh, we have seen previously how we can get all the buildings into a list of dictionaries uh, using the CSV, uh, you know, CSV module. Uh, we have also seen how we identified what are the relevant keys that are important for the gameplay. Now we are ready to start coding the game loop. But before I do that, like always, I would like to give you a top level picture of what's going on. Let's look at the entire sequence in a diagram because once we have this picture clear in our head, in fact, the code starts to follow quite naturally. <clears throat> so the game starts well. Like I said, there are, you know, um, uh, 50, 30 cards in the pack. So we give 15 cards each to both the players. Um, clearly, if you have more cards, then basically half the cards go to, let's say, each player. <clears throat> Alternatively, if you have more players, then well, equal number of cards go to, let's say, every player. Now, as we have seen previously in the card game war, that we can actually do a lot of things over here uh, in the way as to how the cards are distributed. But for now, we can keep it simple. Let's say 15 cards are given to both the players. We can just do a simple slicing. Now. The game basically continues until one of the players, let's say, run out of the cards. For us, it's player versus computer. So either the player or the computer, let's say, runs out of the card. Hence, we are just going to ask ourselves a question at all points. Look, has uh, is there at least one card with, let's say, both the players? If yes, well, in that case, both the players pick up the top card of their pile. <clears throat> and we can say that the move has sort of started here. Um, one of the players chooses the category. Now this, for example, depending on whose chance it is, uh, either the computer or the, let's say the player, which is, let's say the, the user in this case, picks up a category. So it could be height, it could be floor, it could be, let's say, uh, you know, um, year built and so on. Now we come to make a decision. Well, is there a clear winner? Maybe one category is bigger or smaller. I mean, bigger is a little misleading here, but the question is, is there a clear winner for this category between the two cards that we have? Um, if yes, then, then the move is completed. That's simple uh, because, you know, the winner gets both the cards and then we basically go back to the same point. We ask ourselves again, is there at least one card with both the players? On the other hand, let's say, well, there's a draw situation, which means, for example, height for both the buildings is equal and height was the chosen category. Or perhaps let's say the number of years it was it took to build is equal. That was the chosen category. You know, in that case, there's a draw. Again, we say the move is completed. But this time round, instead of going to the, let's say, uh, you know, uh, to one of the two players, the, the cards, in fact, go to the table cards. And then we come back to the beginning and we ask the same question again. So which means that, you know, once, let's say, this move gets over, uh, table has some cards and these table cards will be given back to the player who wins, let's say, the next move. Now, if you think through this carefully, it's very logical, quite nice. And you will see a very striking resemblance between this and what we have done prior, uh, which is the card game war. But I tend to think that this is simpler because there's no concept of war over here. Every move, in fact, you can argue gets over in one chance. It either leads to the cards ending up in the table or they lead to the cards being uh, cards ending up, let's say, in one of the two players. And that's a good thing about this game. Uh, this picture basically is what will guide us. Um, Clearly, you can see there's a while loop required here because we do not know how many times we'll be doing this because, you know, moves will say both parties will keep winning. Um, what we will do is that we will also set up some basic, let's say, uh, lists and, you know, let's say uh, variables to keep this whole thing moving. So I get back here to my code. Uh, just like earlier, notice my all cards is the deck of cards. Um, I am going to have to shuffle this. Uh, I could use the random dot shuffle for this purpose. So I go and say import, let's say random. Now I can just go and say, look, you know, um, say random dot say shuffle, uh, say all cards. Now this is exactly what we had done, for example, in the card game war. And that's logical. Any card game, we start with shuffling the cards. Uh, having done this, I will distribute the cards to the two players. Now here I'm keeping it very simple. Uh, but, you know, obviously there can be many, many more things done uh, as we had seen, for example, in the enhancement ideas for the card game board. But for now, I just say, okay, let me create two lists from the original all cards list. I'll just use slicing for this purpose. So I go and say, well, player cards, let's say, um, you know, are, for example, say all uh, cards, you know, let's just say the even cards go to the player. So say two, so start at zero go all the way to the end in steps of two. So that's all the even cards. And in the same way, computer cards say compute, 
say cards uh, go to let's say the computer and this i started one colon colon two so that started one go to two so you can saying that uh, you can see that every alternate card is being given to the player and the computer and i just create one more variable here uh, you know uh, to say determine whose chance it is and that's i uh, i represent that with let's say um, the variable called chance this is a string variable um, is let's say player and we create you know uh, a, a boolean variable let's say to indicate if the loop is running or not so i just call it let's say game over and i set it to false now this is a boolean uh, that's why it's a false because we are going to put a while loop later on while not game over that's the way uh, we have been writing our while loops and finally i create one more empty list which is the table cards because remember uh, that's integral part of the game as well uh, to be let's say an empty list so i'll just run this to make sure everything is all right um, in this it looks like everything is fine so we have player cards for example that's a list i can look at let's say length of player cards it should be 15 um, yes it is and likewise the length of compute cards you know is also 15 table cards is of course empty and game over is false so we are all kind of you know set up to get moving further but with these variables these lists having been set up uh, i think the next step is logical which is the game loop itself and which is what we are going to do after this uh, i hope this was interesting to you in general if you think this way of learning programming helps uh, we are always building something applying concepts thinking about the problem at hand um, look at our website because that is how we learn Python programming. Take care. Thank you so much. Uh, enjoy programming.